back, by the way. <laughs> Is it not working? No. Oh, uh, well, I, I don't know what's going on with my Okay, that's the intro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> intro fail. Mulligan. No mulligans. I had my mic. <laughs> So hello. <laughs> Awkward. Hey guys, welcome <laughs> to another episode of The Hammer. This is episode 27, yeah? Something like that? Around is that. that, around that. Uh, I'm Toxic, and with me like always is Seb and Savage. So how are you going, guys? Speak at once. Doing pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So... We've got a pretty regular show again. It's uh, been a while since we've had a short show, which is good, I guess, right? Yeah. Yeah. What, what, yeah. Yeah. What he said. So. Um, yeah. So for the main topic, we're going to be talking about campaigns today, um, mostly in 40k, because well, we don't really play fantasy. Um, we are going to talk about. Well, obviously we're gonna do our Black Legion list that we kind of talked about last week, and talk a little bit more about them. We have unit of the week, and I don't know if we have a hobby tip, but we always do have shame hammer. But uh, like always, we'll start off with a week in review where we discuss what we've done in the hobby in the last week. Who wants to go first? Savage. Okay, Savage. You're up. I think everyone seems a bit tired today. I know I am. Yeah. Uh, I done nothing. <laughs> I I painted my, some more of the um, Thousand Suns Land Raider when we did Battle Bros, but that was about it. And I've been working. I got called in my day off, which was you know lovely. <laughs> yeah. So that's that's about me for the week. Okay. Sebi. Uh, well, I, I we we got a game in to end around the last time we played, and you spanked me with the tower again. Uh, mm -hmm. I think I still got that one one unheralded victory against you. And I need to get some more. Um, I was supposed to start some painting this week, but never really got the chance. But I have been recording the Epistles of Logar by Erebus the Talentosser uh, each day this week. Fun Harris Heresy stuff, and just sorting lists out and things. Really, I need to get my ass in gear with painting, but. Yes, you do. A little bit less than nothing. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, myself, I've been uh, working and doing commissions. You can see some War Machine stuff on the table behind me. That's uh, the mini Wargaming commission where I've just been stripping the paint uh, for the last week. Um, you can also kind of see them in the very back. There's like the two artillery turrets from Earthshaker cannons. I assembled three Forge World artillery carriages yesterday. And the plan is to paint them today. I don't know if it's actually going to happen or not. And then after the show last week, I painted up 10 Death Corps of Krieg infantry. And I think that's about it. Oh, I painted up a War Machine Warjack during Battle Bros, uh, Battle Bros Live last Sunday. You're showing off and dual wielding and all that stuff. And that was that was about that's about all I've done. Um, Oh yeah. Oh, um, I guess no. Did I did I have the the plague route finished by then? I don't remember if I did or not. I don't think I had. I don't but think so. The plague route is now is now finished. So, well, finished assembly, not painting, obviously. So there you go. I'm still claiming that slightly something I've done as I commissioned it. <laughs> <laughs> I guess it's, it's I wouldn't have done it if it wasn't <laughs> wasn't for that. But okay, so let's get into news and rumors, shall we? It uh, looks like it's going to be a bit of a short news and rumors, but uh, is that is that correct, Seb? Uh, it's a little bit shorter than usual, but I think the last few weeks have been, been a bit crazy. So we got, so we this got is actually normal. Ones. The other ones were just long. Yeah, I'd, I'd say so. Okay. Well, don't mind me. Uh, just knocking the scenery. So, um, yeah, in the rumours this week, uh, Army Builder has uh, has, a, has a license change. Um, for those of you who haven't received the letter from Lone Wolf, uh, they changed their licensing policy for Army Builder starting on August 1st. 
all active on build licenses no longer require yearly extensions uh, to access the program and will just continue to be active and never expire, which is good time to view it. What happens if you don't have an active one? Because I don't have an active one, but I have paid like three years prior. But I had a problem with them recently and I said, I sent them a message and they're like, yeah, we can't help you. I said, okay, fair enough, maybe it's my fault, but uh, you know, I'm not going to give your company any more money. Well, because like the way they do their license, right, is you, let's say you buy it today on the, you know, the 3rd of August, right, you put down, mm -hmm. you buy it, you have your monthly, I mean your yearly kind of subscription to it, in a year's time, it's going to expire, right, so let's Problem. say you don't, let's say you're not playing Warhammer at that moment, right, so you don't subscribe to it. And then a year later, in uh, July, you're like, you know what, I should I should subscribe to that again. I'm playing Warhammer now, I'm building lots of Amulets. So let's say, you know, a week from the 3rd of August, you know, in July, you put down your, subs your yearly subscription. And you <laughs> think, okay, well, I have till July next year now. Well, no, now on August the 3rd, your subscription ends. It doesn't matter when you set it up, it always sticks on the first activation. So that is your period of um, payments. It doesn't matter where you, when you pay, it always goes by your first activation date. So you could pay on August the 2nd, and it will cancel on August the 3rd, and you'll have to pay again. And that's what happened to me. I didn't realize this. I thought, you know, you buy a, you buy a yearly subscription. So I brought it like a week before my actual yearly one ran out because that was the first time I activated it and I didn't know that and I sent them a thing like why is it asking me that you know to subscribe again and all that and they said they sent me the link the information is there you're just not going to read it unless you read all those contracts and shit and like I said you know it's probably my fault um, I should have read that stuff but I don't think it's right and I'm not going to give your company any more money but now yeah, if all I have to do is subscribe once and I get it forever you know, maybe I'll do that because I think resubscribing is only like twelve dollars, and it's you know it's really nice to have those automatic updates because you you don't need to have the subscription to use it. You can go onto their website and manually um, put the files into Army Builder, which is what I've been doing. But having that automatic subscription is nice. So that's why I was asking because I don't want to give them any more money because I think that's a terrible practice to do it that way. It, it's very dodgy. Um. Uh, the, the license of change looks like you, it will be just carrying on, but that's something you'd have to check out specifically with Lone Wolf. I, I, I can't completely confirm or deny what what will be happening there. But I do love the fact that you work yourself up and calm yourself down in one in one rant. It's good. <laughs> hey, it's how we get on with the show. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, Savage, anything you want to come in on Army Builder? I know you use Army Builder. Um, is it? I remember ages ago they were talking about getting it for like. Uh, tablets and stuff. Is that? Does anyone know if that's happened? I don't know yet. No. Oh. I'm sense. not 100 percent sure. Alright, well I'll have to look into that. Watch this face. Okay, so in in, in other news, the Games Workshop financial report has been published. Uh, but uh, Tom Kirby, chairman and acting CEO of Games Workshop, a uh, little quote from him, uh, Games Workshop has had a mixed year. Sales were stronger in the first half than the second, but, lost, but cost control and cash management have strengthened throughout the period. We finished the year with the most profits this company has generated since flotation and have returned 18.4 million to our owners. It doesn't sound like a mixed year. <laughs> no. Like, it was the best year they've had ever. It's not... Essentially. It's not a, like I kind of get where they're coming from, where uh, they're saying like it wasn't kind of uh, you know one thing throughout the year, and that is I guess that can be kind of seen as a mixed year. But it, but when I think mixed year, I'm thinking like you know it wasn't good, it wasn't bad. We had bad times and good times, and it came out to be kind of like a meh year. If you're having an excellent start of the year and then like a you know it's we're still doing pretty good end of the year, and you end up having the best year you've had. Probably not a mixed year. <laughs> this is the inherent problem with business, business, isn't it? It's like we could, if we'd sold everything, absolutely everything, and brought out ten more supplements, we could have made more money. Damn. Technically, we're down then. <laughs> <laughs> 
It just it, eight, 18, they returned 18 million to the shareholders, is that correct? 18.4 million, yeah. That's a fucking lot of money for a miniatures <laughs> company. For a company that sells miniatures, that is a lot of money. Yeah, they had a mixed year. It got, like, warm, and then it went cold, and then it got warm again. <laughs> yeah, the, the worst so, part is that they're making the money from us, and they're not, you know... I guess we've had, had this conversation before, is they don't really look after their their, their, their customer base. They're just interested in our wallets, so... And Yes, go fuck what? yourself and you're mixed, yeah. <laughs> well, it, it, it's the same as a hooker, really. You you go for the titties and, you know, the stuff. You don't really care about who she is or what her, what her life story I have, I is. I don't even understand that one right then, but... <laughs> <laughs> well, you said, like, Games Workshop doesn't care about it, so they just want us for the wallets. It's the same as someone going to buy a hooker. <laughs> I guess so. This is why I normally talk over Savage. <laughs> <laughs> to stop him from saying stuff like this. Yeah. Are we safe to move on? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. I mean, we could rant about this all day, but we'll we'll move well, on we, and... We could get back into look, it in the shame, shame hammer if you fancy. And, and just say... Uh, look, at, you know. look at previous episodes. You can see rants there. <laughs> uh, so... Games Day Memphis uh, has been and gone, and we've got some cool pictures of some new Forge Worldy exciting stuff from that. So, and so we've got the Iron Hands Contemptor, which is looking very pretty. We've got uh, Magus Dominus, which I, I know Toxic you were saying is very looking pretty spanking, the new Mechanicum character. Yeah, it looks kind of cool. Never really seen anything like that before in the 40k kind of world, I guess. I th they just seem to perpetually bringing a little bit out because I think we mentioned a while ago the rumours that they're going to keep bringing little bits of mechanic out until you can make a full along. army yeah which would be fun times we've also got the, the Sicker and Battle Tank and the good old Storm Raptor and Storm Raptor looks pretty cool as well I think I haven't got to that one yet because oh, I'm apologize. just showing off that tank first <laughs> yeah, Sicker and Battle Tank is nice there we go I, I like that it looks like those um Kind of looks like that one ship from Star Wars, if I'm looking at it correctly, with like the bubble gun on the side. Oh yeah, like the the the, the clone like yeah. uh, dropship type thing. Yeah, yeah it does. That's, that's like the second week that we've we've uh, mentioned one of the new Forge World like models looks like Star Wars. What was the last one? The land speeder. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, maybe. If Forge World and Star Wars becoming one huge entity. There's a new rumour for you. <laughs> Take that one with some salt. <laughs> Shit ton of salt. A bag of salt. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, shall we move on to Black Library or do you, do you want to talk about those models a bit more? Uh, no, I'm good. Yeah. Okay, so Black Library uh, dig Digital Editions. We've got uh, Quake Cannons as from the Monitorum, uh, all very exciting, 99 English pence or $1.99 American and Australian, because fuck you, that's why. Um, te also, Tactical Dreadnought Armor, uh, Index Society's new one is out, as well as Cold Steel, which is uh, a war raging across an airless moon. Uh, it's a brand new apocalypse short story from David Geimer featuring the monolith Necron Tesseract vault. Yep. It's now a brand new story to... <laughs> get you to go buy the brand new models it that's all it is come on it, that's all it is i i can totally see that i keep saying they don't even gonna, have new have art it. on the cover it's just a picture of the the monolith I mean, that monolith tesseract art <laughs> thing it, it's not even a picture it's just a silhouette <laughs> yeah but that's it's not even it doesn't even have art it's just a story with like some something that savage could do in photoshop i wasn't going to say i wasn't going to say me or Sev because well, we probably couldn't, but Savage might be able to. Yeah, I could probably do that. Yeah. I mean, it might be a good story, but I mean, that's all I see it as right now. Yeah, but like I keep keep saying it. One one week when I when I'm more solvent, I'm gonna get the get all the Monitorum Index Astartes and Warlords and digital things. And actually, give them a proper read and review and do it as a topic because if they're actually quality, then not just a money grab but if they're just going someone quickly bang out a story with the new model in it and then that's not really worth 
yeah so we shall see watch that space but they're one pound fifty okay i do believe um we've also got there's the new uh audio drama uh, from the Horace Heresy Censure by Nick Kime now <laughs> I didn't realise that this is up for, for um, pre-order now uh, in the depths of chaos archaeology so it's following on from the Mark of Kalth and No No Fear um, and cracking on with the uh, the Ultramarines I kind of thought this would have been out a while I've been trying to find this for a long long time and I realised that now it's just come up for pre-order <laughs> so that's good times 75 minutes uh, production from Heavy Entertainment uh, we've got Gareth Armstrong, Sean Barrett, Martin Ellis, Chris Fairbank, and David Timpson. So, full on, almost all the uh, the main narrators there. That's actually quite fun. In fantasy news, uh, back to the, we had the Big Lisbon release last week. Uh, the limited edition sold out. Shock, shock, horror. Um, and there's a, we got a few rules and things that have uh, come from the book. Uh, in general, um, it seems that most characters have taken a significant cost reduction, despite stat lines and rules remaining largely unchanged. Uh, Master Bundy is increased to 720. Uh, Slan, are le not as powerful as they once were. Um, they can get all the eight six signature spells like high elf characters. Salamanders have gone up a bit, raised on down a bit. Uh, Bastard and Sun Engines seems better than it was originally expected, with it giving all units within six inches plus one initiative and gets to fire its uh, bound spell um, and does anywhere between D3 to S3 uh, hits and 2D6 strength 6 hits based on special chart so there's some fun fantasy rules that don't necessarily mean a huge punt to us guys but trying to put a bit more fantasy out there because there are a few people that do appreciate fantasy <laughs> uh, in supplements news um, it looks like not all sub factions within the 40k will receive supplements only those that have the potential Bring an alternate yet character characterful place out of the tabletop. Now that's going to be contentious with you guys, I'm sure. Um, and the scope of expanding the law, which again, the scope of expanding the law, I see is where Black Legion kind of comes in. It looks like just over half the space three chapters of the first founding received. He's savage shaking his head there. <laughs> the Mono God Legions will not apparently be getting supplements. Um, it's felt as though they were well enough reflected in the Codex. Iron Warriors, Night Lords, Word Bearers will be given examples of uh, Chaos Legion supplements. And out of the four remaining craft worlds, there's only plans to turn three of them into supplements. Uh, Tau are not scheduled to get an addition. Uh, are now Tau are not scheduled to get a single additional supplement. Instead, there's going to be three. I've got a little bit more on that in a moment. Um, so yeah, Chaos Space Marines, as we said, World Eaters, Thousand Sons, Death Guard, Empress Children are all going to get supplements eventually. Uh, the elite units in the core codex don't necessarily reflect world eaters, just corn berserkers, for example. Um, so I don't know how you feel about that, Savage. <laughs> huh? What? I wasn't making funny. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, anything productive to say? <laughs> well, I wouldn't say productive, but you know. It, Seb is the kind of guy that invented like the monotorum thing for like the guns and shit. Like, you know what would be cool? More law on guns. <laughs> like, let's talk about a bolter. Everyone wants to learn about a bolter. There's different pattern bolters. Um, <laughs> I'm not having. Do I give a shit? <laughs> <laughs> if it's the dong pattern bolter for the knights for the uh, knights of testes for the dice troopers, it might be important. <laughs> does it does it help me roll dice any better? <laughs> right, moving on. <laughs> the legion list will have uh, unit entries for berserker, plague, rubric, noise, marine, noise terminators. So there'll be terminators for all those dudes now. Unique warlord traits and some fun war gear stuff. Uh, for the Tau, Tau have two more books, one uh, coming for Crute and the rest uh, as an expanded empire. Um, so the first would be like Tau mercenaries, um, it could, they could have uh, focusing on the Crute and possibly having Vespid giving HQ options, war gear, new rules and the ability to have a non-Tau Tau army essentially. Um, it just look, looks like there is a QHQ in the works, Crute getting their own transport, Crute will get light armor saves with a 6 plus. Uh, and some fes Vespers being reworked and getting a heavy unit, which would be rather exciting. Uh, so, and also, so the other one's the Expanded Empire. Now, this is rather intriguing because we don't really know what it's going to be. 
It could be include the Demiurge, could it be con human constructs, or just any other part of the Empire of Tau. Basically, anything that isn't in the Codex, Farsight, or Tau Mercenaries. Now, I was discussing it with Fox, and Fox has a dream. dream and Fox's dream is that, that like codices will end up being everything you need to make your own personalised army, so it won't be based around Ultramarines or Black Legion or anything like that, or it'd just be ready for you to make your own Craft World Legion or Chapter, and then you could use the supplements as things to supplement it, and if you actually wanted to use an existing army, that's not really what's happening at the moment, but it would be a good idea. <coughs> Possibly. Mm. So we've got some more... How is it not happening yet? I mean, there's two supplements out, and they've both kind of been exactly that. Well, you but like if you're arguing with the whole Black Legion stuff and the Warrior stuff, you're saying that 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 hasn't already happened. You're saying that's already completely covered within within the yeah. But credits. you were saying <laughs> that it's its own thing and it deserves to have its own supplement. So if if and if it wasn't based around the Ultramarines, then Ultramarines would get their own one. Oh, totally. What what I'm saying is the the Codex is set up in a way that it can make you. Do, do whatever you want, but it would be better, it could be more improved with just more things, more examples, more ideas, and more pushing you towards making your own thing. Which the so exactly, so exactly what I said last week, pretty much, except you guys said, no, that was stupid. What I said, that it's just a rule book <laughs> with all the rules, and then you add, you know, the supplements. You know, remember how I said that? And you're like, no, that's that. stupid. It was in the you, last you said show. like everything, everything in one, like the old um, ones they used to have with all the imperial stuff, the, Imper the Codex Imperialist sort of thing, but for everything. I don't know what that is, and I'm too tired. <laughs> <laughs> Let's move on. I just, yeah, Let's just, just carry on. <laughs> we'll come so, back to this. <laughs> in Space Marines news, uh, the Codex uh, will not be Ultramarines focused. Instead, the pages will describe. Um, representing the second founding chapters and many of them who have been converted following the file of the Codex Astartes. Uh, Space Marine character changes to, to combat tactics exist and they will be now available for purchase as upgrades to any generic HQ allowing you to play a Raven Guard without Shri Shriek or Salamanders without Vulcan. Um, there's going to be larger Terminators as we've mentioned many many times but they're going to be aesthetic curving shapes both of Contemptor and Tauf Stealth Suits. <laughs> That's a weird combination. Um, but bigger than normal Terminators, as we keep saying. Uh, so we now have some release order speculation. So it looks like, so in August 2013, we will have the Black Legion supplement digitally, and then in September we will have uh, Space Marines Codex White Scars supplement. And there are already rumours that the White Scars supplement might actually be printed. So watch this space. Uh, October we'll have the actual co print copy of Farsight, the Orc Codex Black Legion supplement in print, possibly, hopefully. Uh, December, Black Templar Codex. And then also rumoured for 2013, we have the Raven Guard su supplement, and that could be coming later this year, uh, as well as the possible Orc Unknown supplement with digital first and then coming out later. And then next year we've got Tyranids to be looked to be looked forward to as the first Codex, hopefully, followed by Imperial Guard, and then a Catachan supplement, Ultramarine supplement, Tau Mercenary supplement, Bill Tan supplement, Sam Hain supplement, Blood Angels supplement, and Space Wolves supplement. But the last two, Blood Angels and Space Wolves, are more vague rumours. And the, the other things we have rumoured without a time frame is the Fallen, Tau Expanded Empire, World Eaters, Thousand Sons, Death Guard, and Empress Children. Because, it, yeah, it does look like we would have a Jeremy Vettick Fallen. Dark Angels uh, supplement. Sorry, Toxic, were you about to come in? No. I oh, was. sorry. Oh, sorry, Savage. Oh, <laughs> oh no, we'll move on then. <laughs> no, go okay. Go, 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 sorry. I was going to say, so they, can, so they can have the White Scars supplement printed, but they're not printing the Tower supplement because the printing press is so far behind. <laughs> it was just a rumour. It could be a very salty, salty rumour. Yeah, I know, but I was just making fun of it because... <laughs> Is there, yeah, we, we can't print the towel supplement because it, it, the printing press is overwhelmed, but you can buy it online, but we'll have the White Scars one out. Like, I just don't think that would go down well. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway. So that, that that's for the yeah, things upcoming. Uh, 
in Forge World news, we have uh, a video for the Imperial Armor Apocalypse. Do you want to take that away, Tuxik? Okay. If I can find it. There we go. Uh, Imperial Armor Apocalypse is written so that you can use it with only the Warhammer 40,000 rulebook and the Warhammer 40,000 Apocalypse expansion book. Only? You only need two other books to use it? allows it. players to use the whole God range damn. of vehicles that we produce in Warhammer 40,000 Apocalypse. Uh, the book contains over 75 vehicle profiles. Uh, this is both for super heavy vehicles and for standard Warhammer 40,000 vehicles. Not only do you get 75 vehicle profiles, you also get a number of different formations as well as various other rules to use in your games. The profiles and formations of the book are all updated for the 6th edition of the Warhammer 40,000 rules, but it also includes a number of vehicles that have never before been in print for this version of the rules and for a lot of armies that have been missing these vehicles before. We've made sure that there's material in this book for every player. You'll also find a full war zone included in the back of the book. This war zone Vrax covers the entirety of the Vrax conflict, previously available in the original three War for Vrax books. We've redone the rules for this, updated it, and now you can play, replay the entire campaign using this book, as well as three complete apocalypse missions charting different sections of the conflict. Does anyone else not think that's crazy when he said only? You only need those two books. You only need to already spend over $100 on books and then buy this ridiculously expensive book. <laughs> Throw it on $200 on books, then you can play the game. <laughs> oh, now you need an Apocalypse Army. Put down another $2,000. I, I thought it was stupid as well. They said there's over 75 units. Some of which are Forge World, some of which are already existing Games Workshop. Buy this book that shows all the details. Buy this book that shows those details again. Yeah. So they're uh, putting Games Workshop models into an, a Forge World Apocalypse book. With the new War Zone. <coughs> Shut up, Sam. Old, new, old War Zone, actually, isn't it? See, I wasn't sure if they said that they were 40k if they were already like 40k units or if they were just 40k units because there's like those forge world units i don't know because i didn't know if he was saying like then there's not just oh, apocalypse I... units there's also the units that they have that can be used in regular games of 40k i think oh, that might have okay. been what it was but it's still I... it's still basically a book that's just taking information already out there and selling it to you again yeah basically updated <laughs> uh, don't, no, it, it has all that fluff in there though it really expands you know, the story and <laughs> oh, you can, okay more news and rumours more news and rumours just yeah so <laughs> just to finish nice that it's going to be pre-order available from the 9th of August that's because we've been chatting about some of these things as well um, the Legion Glaive is not in Apocalypse uh Legion of Glaive is not going to be featured in the new Apocalypse book and it, they decided that the vehicle was ideally for use in the Horus House games rather than 40k or normal Apocalypse games. However, as the rules for the Glaive are available on Forge World, then you could use it if you just use the rules, but it's not in the books. So you could use it, but you can't use it, but you can if you want to. And then if you do want to use it when the rules are out in a published book, then you have to buy that <laughs> book as well. So buy four exactly. books to use this one tank in this one game of Apocalypse. <laughs> Oh, don't forget, you have to buy the tank as well. Yeah. <laughs> and yes. then if you want to know more about the gun, you can buy that. And if you want to know more about the, the, the rivets that they use to attach all the metal sheeting, you can buy that as well. Oh, oh. So, moving on. See, one of the see Seb, it, expanding the floor. <laughs> Just like you said. It definitely you adds a lot to the game. You have to buy it. No one has to buy it. <laughs> it definitely... You have to buy the two books to use that Apocalypse book. You don't have to be, yeah, but no one's making you buy that Apocalypse book. Is what I'm saying. 
And no one's making you buy the Montorum, or, the, or even the Black Legion. They do make you buy it if you already have Apocalypse units, though. Yeah. That's that's the... Like, because if, if you play Apocalypse a lot, and you've spent you know, hundreds of dollars on Apocalypse units from Forge World, and now all of a sudden they, they updo the Apocalypse rules, you have to buy the Apocalypse rules from Games Workshop. You probably already own the 6th edition rules. And now you also got to buy the Apocalypse rules from Forge World to use your units. It's like I understand, you know, that happens with everything. Everything gets new additions, and you just have to buy them. But it's just, I can see how it gets frustrating though. If you if you're putting hundreds of dollars into it, and now you have to put put hundreds of more dollars just to update your books, it gets kind of about all the fluff though. <laughs> it's such a dick. I'm moving on. I am moving on. <laughs> right. The Dark Heresy 2nd Edition beta is now up. You can now join and try and get involved in the beta on the Fantasy Flight Games website. Um, so, yeah, it's the new 140,000 role playing game edition. Uh, it features more flexible skills, action point based combat, vehicle rules, and more! Exclamation mark. Uh, there's, yeah, action lots, lots point different... based combat? That's what it says. Ugh. Yeah, action point based combat. Does it add more to the fluff? <laughs> <laughs> Probably. Uh, it it does have streamlined skills that can be used uh, with more than a single characteristic. Fast, fun character creation, an exciting variety through combinations of home worlds, backgrounds, roles, and more, almost endless roleplay possibilities. The ability to play as an Inquisitor, uh, new rules of psychic powers with each discipline gaining its own unique psychic pheno phenomena table, and lots of other good... See, I don't like that part stuff. where it lets you play as an Inquisitor. I don't like that. I mean, it's it, it's about being an Inquisitor's acolyte. You are just an acolyte. If you're an Inquisitor, your GM's gonna hate you. You're gonna be at each other's throats, like by the end of that, because an Inquisitor just has so much power at their fingertips. They can they can tell an Imperial Imperial Guard army to all walk down to the store and buy him donuts if if he wanted to do that. <laughs> to go like, across the how road do and you, get him some orange sherbet. Yeah, how do you how do you like GM that though? Like how do, how would you GM someone with that much power without getting frustrated because they're just gonna be breaking your stories all the time? And well, they just keep warping them. There's one in every every game. Yeah, I know, but now like can you imagine having that one person, that one person that already tries to break the rules and then you make him an inquisitor? Like just can you imagine like how it would just it would just ruin it would ruin the game. I mean, you know who I'm talking to about that one guy in all our ones, yeah, right? Could you yeah, imagine if he had yeah. the power of an Inquisitor? Yeah, I could. But if I was GM, I'd just be like, yeah, your character died. And yeah. he makes another one, I just keep killing his character. That's why you <laughs> haven't Absolutely. GM'd before. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's why I never will. Because <laughs> I get that one person that I don't like, I'll be like, your character's dead. <laughs> but but you see that, Seb? Like, how that could be concerning? Totally. <sighs> If the whole game is based around being like a neophyte, what, 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 why, why have the option? But maybe, maybe you can progress to become an inquisitor, like a, like an ultimate, like, pa like paragon tier, like heroic tier in like D and D and stuff. Right. <laughs> You're not convinced. No. <laughs> well, that does bring us to the end of another happy and very brief uh, <laughs> rumor roundup this week. <laughs> yeah, that was quick. It was like, yeah. yeah. I, the I thing is, I added extra fluff to to pad it out. <laughs> yeah. See, I, I don't you understand where you where you're getting at, little savage. You're the one that says like, "Oh, I make my lists all fluffy." Yeah, I know, but it's just something to pick on Seb about. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so in our main topic, we're talking about campaigns. As you know, we did a Planetary Empires campaign over the last month or so, uh, which ended up in Savage losing his mojo and uh, quitting, and then we did a dice roll off for the remaining tiles, and I ended up uh, capturing the most tiles, so technically I won, although it did feel kind of hollow. There's an asterisk next to that victory. Um, but yeah, so Plan just yeah, Planetary Empires basically goes by the first ten tiles. We all started off with seven, so it was kind of like you needed to win three times and capture three times. Um, I think I won a couple more than three because I failed a few captures, but that's basically Planetary Empires in a nutshell. Um, anyone have any other words on that? Why I try and look for my correct scenes? There we go. 
I was just gonna say I'm happy that I didn't lose. Yay! <laughs> oh. Savage any yeah. words on campaigns, oh. plantar pies in particular? Yeah, it's pretty fun. But it just depends, like, because I was bringing Iron Warriors, so I was trying to stick to the Iron Warriors thing, and there's only so many lists you can make before you run out of ideas. Right. Well, I, I mean, I, 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 ran, my problem. I ran three lists in, that whole, in the whole, like, campaign. It's just finding the right kind of list, I guess. But, yeah. I think that Definitely. system actually works fine itself. Uh, capturing yeah. tiles and all that. Although, um, and we're going to mention this as well, um, Savage and I have been playing a lot of Total War lately, and you have maps you know, similar to this, and it's just so much more detail on actually how the map works. Like, this kind of felt, felt like you didn't really need the map. Uh, like, it's there, you capture tiles, it kind of matters where you're placed, but you don't kind of move your army around the map or anything like that, and I think that's kind of what it's lacking. Your army's just kind of there, always, yeah, wherever you are. Yeah, you're always on that. You're always on every single tile at the same time. Yeah, and I, I think it, that's kind of what it lacks. I mean, Seb, can you kind of agree there? Yeah, totally. It'd be not nice to have a bit more of a dynamic to it. Yeah. Well, even if it went to, like, um, Dawn of War, the game, the first one, that campaign, where it's, like, you had, like, allocated forces on each of your tiles still. Yeah. Yeah, like Dark I think, Crusade. Yeah. I think we've kind of played a campaign like that, similar in the past, where you make your army and that's the army on that tile. Yeah, yeah. I think we did that. But, um, yeah, because we've, we've, we've kind of toying with the idea and I've been writing down some rules for actually doing a Total War 40k, which um, I, I'm pretty excited about. Um, your guys' thoughts on, on that idea? Yeah, I'm really excited. <laughs> I gotta say, <laughs> yeah. Cause okay. No, go oh, on. I was gonna expand. I, yeah, well, yeah. The, the thing, the thing I really enjoyed about the Planetary Empires campaign is just having, and just the idea of going into the next one is just to have like a reason to have to play and like to, to have to make the time and just to get it in, because we're all different time zones and mm -hmm. variously busy people, and it's nice. It's nice to be like you have to play this game this week. Unless you're savage, but <laughs> <laughs> it's not that. nice. It's not nice. <laughs> it's the worst thing. But looking forward to the more the greater depth in the new, uh, more like uh, GM'd games. Yeah, that, that's what I'm looking forward to. Is just the the more depth in in the uh, like a total war kind of. You know, on we can have multiple planets. Uh, you know, you make your armies, you have to upkeep them, so your armies actually mean something. You lose a unit, you know, bam, there goes your resource. But it's also going to free up a resource as well. Um, I like that idea. We still have to, the things we still have to figure out is um, uh, what you can build, um, and if they mean anything, um, we have to figure out just, you know, s things like that. I also played around with the idea of maybe having... Um, NPC armies on each place and uh, so like you might have one world that has like a militia kind of thing and you use the Imperial Guard Codex and you know they'll have a few zones you got to capture before you get there maybe you'll be on like a, a snow planet that's you know covered in orcs or something like that so I kind of like that idea as well but that sounds awesome I just don't know how I just haven't figured out how to kind of work them kind of yet because I thought maybe it'd be like you know, uh, if you attack an NPC army, they act a certain way, or you just roll off to see wh who takes control of that army. So, but well, that's just things we'll figure out. But um, I mean, how does like Savage? How do you actually feel? Because I mean, you've been saying a lot about fluff recently, but how do you actually feel about playing 40k, a 40k campaign over just you know? playing a pickup game kind of with a friend or something uh, it, it's it's good and it's bad at the same time because like the story like you can make up like a story behind it and stuff which definitely adds to it and gets you a bit more pumped for it but then at the same time you kind of like lock down to a certain army 
like to play. Whereas if you don't feel like playing that one week, you you want to play like if you want to play Chaos, but you're playing Blood Angels in the campaign, you kind of you, you have to pick it, and then you're not going to really feel into the game as much. Right. That's kind of how I felt in like towards the end. It's just like Iron Warriors. I was just like, well, oh, there's only so much you can do, and then you, it's the same thing. Yeah, I think it's really just comes to like, what are you going to choose? when you start the campaign like yeah. you have to think l- the long term like am I going to want to play this army for you know this amount of time um, and it really comes to you know um, it also comes down to when, like when you're buying an army you're going to see well am I actually going to get the use out of it you know, if I'm going to be playing this campaign am I actually going to be want to play this army throughout the campaign but I was just thinking, can can you like, could you could kind of have a rule that you could have, like Chaos Space Marines, and you you put you're playing the Chaos Space Marines slash Chaos Demons faction, so then at any point you could play any, like Warband or, or Chaos Demons or Chaos Space Marines, and you could have like Imperium, you have all the Space Marine Legions, and you could dip in and out of each codex. Yeah, I mean, and you could have, that could work and give you a bit more variety. I mean, technically you're not locked down to just having Iron Warriors it's just something in your head that's blocking you from picking anything else like yeah, the fluff well, side it, of it yeah it just you know it, it wouldn't feel right and then I'd get picked on on the hammer as well because <laughs> I took Corn Berserkers in an Iron Warriors thing I wouldn't pick on you for that because I, I did no. that my Iron Warriors army had Corn Berserkers in it they... no, but Mr. Fluff over there would <laughs> <laughs> well I'm I'm waiting to see what's in the uh, Iron Warriors supplement. That's what you need to get yourself going when you're Iron Warriors army skin. <laughs> I would I would buy an Iron Warriors supplement because Good. it's one that actually needs it, not it is. Black Legion. Hey, we'll get into that later. But uh, any any ideas on um, what armies you might be taking in another campaign? Uh, you both played Chaos Space Marines and I played Space Wolves. Um, thoughts on how they did in the campaign and what you might change or what you might add or you know, just completely doing it. Another army. Seb, I'll let you go first because Savage has already kind of spoken about this. But okay, um, well, it was a real kind of trial by fire for me. Like it was my first getting an army list from being oh, I'll make an army list to actually trying to make an army list that's going to be in some way competitive. So that that it's kind of this the, our first Pantheon was campaign really blew my mind with that, and through that it's made me very tentative about taking Chaos Demons because they just don't seem to be that competitive I love them and the fluff sorry Savage I said fluff again um, and all that stuff is exciting and, and lovely and I love it but yeah they just don't really work on the floor so maybe I'm, I'm intrigued by the interrogator chaplains um, and with, the, with Dark Angel so I'm thinking of maybe making myself an interrogator chaplain and going a Dark Angel route possibly okay Savage yeah I might uh, do a do over Either maybe Blood Angels or some guard, maybe. You could do maybe both. Orcs. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I'm really undecided until it comes to the last moment. Because I mean, what what we could do is you could just say like whatever base you could like what Seb was saying. You could pick a your your faction. You go like Chaos, um, Imperium, and then when you go when it comes down to capturing a province and build building a base that's when you choose what army that base will be producing so like you bu- right. so you, you capture it and then say you're imperium you're like okay well i've captured this province you know send in the imperial guard imperial guard builds up a base and that's where your imperial guard get built from capture another province you know salamanders you know that I ain't mean, not salamanders maybe like just space marines but if you're going to be fluffy salamanders and, and like that could work as well the only problem would be if you were doing something like you know Tau or Eldar or Dark Elder, you are kind of limited to that. Well, all my things are going to be building that. But then again, if that's the army you choose, I guess, you know, deal with it. Well, I think you'd almost throw Tau, like, it was a bit dodgy, but you could almost throw Tau, Elder, Dark Elder together and, like, Tyranids and Orcs together as just. It's uh, very dodgy. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I, I know, I know, it's dodgy. You, you, I mean, I there'd be ways to balance it out. Yeah. I wouldn't even. I would even, yeah, it, it, I wouldn't. 
I want. I actually want to do this with like more players as well than just three. I don't know how well it would work, but like that would be. I would like that. I, I think campaigns work better with more people. Yeah, the than only, less people. The only problem is, is that the more people you get, the harder it is to that, get everyone to play their game. Yeah, because yeah, we've been there before as well. Yeah, and when you have small amounts of people, it's easier to get the games played. Yeah. Um. But I think you know five people would be good for this. Because because the yeah. only problem I'm seeing with three people, we'll have enough. But the way that I want to do it is there's going to be so many planets that we might be having to do more than one game in a in a round because it it's not based on which tiles you pick. You actually have to build your army up and then move it around the planets and the, and the provinces to capture them. So you could have like you know five small armies just moving around, and you could get into five games of five small army games, <laughs> or you could have one big army and get into one game. You know what I'm trying to say? So yeah, which but that's not a problem because if we if we you know if everyone if there's no limit on you have to do it in a week, it's just a round, you know. Yeah, it's a lot of trial and error. It's it's an ambitious task, and we'll see what happens. But yeah, um, so myself, uh, I played Space Wolves obviously, and I know Space Wolves very well, and um, I took like three lists throughout the campaign, and they all did very well. Um, the only thing I would change would be cha take another army because, well, Space Wolves, like, I do know them well, um, you know, I enjoy playing them, but you know, maybe just change something up, I'd probably go Tau, just to get to know them more get to know them better, because I do want some Tau. So yeah, that's about all I would change. I mean, you can't change much when you win. Did, did, did you actually lose any games at all? No. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. So, uh, so yeah, so that's, that's that. Um, any more words on campaigns? Then... Let's get going. No, I excited. I would like to see a campaign tournament kind of thing. Like instead of having just a, a tournament, you know, just a standard one, they do like a campaign tournament. That way, it's not just best general in on the tabletop. It's best general in like logistics and how you, where you deploy, you know, in a campaign and all that. I think that would be kind of cool to see like a serious kind of campaign tournament rather than just the regular old boring campaigns that are around. That's just my thoughts on campaigns. It's the only thing I would like you, out of them. You can buy, buy that new Apocalypse book and play that campaign. As long as you buy the other 40k rulebook and the 40k Apocalypse. I actually do like the um, the Forge World campaigns, so I would do that. It's I do like the, the Forge World campaigns. No one's going to buy the Apocalypse book without, without already having the 40k book. And no one's going to buy the Forge World... For Apocalypse book without having the 40k book and presumably the Apocalypse book. It, it, like, I know it's silly that you need all of them, but you are likely to have them all if you are going to get them. Yeah, but it's not going to stop us from making fun of it. <laughs> okay. Nothing is going to stop you making fun of anything. No. <laughs> so moving on to the shame hammer. Uh, Seb, again, I think this is your week. I mean, you've, you're bringing us all these shameful things and uh, a lot of the times you're the center of them. So what have you brought <laughs> today? to the table uh, so last week we had me trying to call out Nick Kime on the internet for sort of lying on his website about whether or not Scorched Earth would be a limited edition and I was like I'm not buying it because it's expensive and it's ridiculous but then I sold the disgusting absolute shame that is Korak Soulforge the previous limited edition and made more than my money so I kind of might have possibly bought Scorched Earth, like Black Library's bitch that I am. So, like, you know, how <laughs> we were, like, talking, and we were saying, you know, that you're, you're bad-mouthing it now, but in a week you'll have it, and yeah. you were joking around with that, but then it actually happened. See, yeah. <laughs> Savage and I aren't even that bad. We we were bad-mouthing, um, what's the Death from the Skies or whatever, Yeah, and we, we still, still, and we still haven't brought it. 
I wasn't bad mathing the book. I was bad mathing him saying one thing and doing another. That's why I was bad yeah. mathing. He's trying to make it make up for it now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wasn't really bad mathing him. I was more of like just pointing out the obvious. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, anyone else have anything? And also, yeah, I, I just threw this picture together because it kind of sums up how I feel about the whole situation. Um, no, I don't really have anything to add for Shame Hammer. I can't think of anything too shameful without being um, being an asshole. So I'm just not going to say anything at all. Are you? Are you? Are you like, is that because of my mentioning of possible factions together? No. Just, okay. Good. No, no, no. It's something else that I'm not gonna even mention because it just I'm not gonna do it. Okay. No, no. If it's what I think it is, please don't. <laughs> What's that? I said if it, if it's what I suddenly just thought it might be, please don't. <laughs> yeah. No. I'm not. Um, so yeah, they're savage. I'm afraid to ask, but do you have anything? Mm, no. Oh, I really want to say something, but I'm not going to. Do it. I would, Don't I'd be a like, pussy. Sit, I would really, like, very seriously appreciate it if you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not going. There's just the one. It's just the one part that just kind of, kind of, kind of gets to me. But I'm not going. Do it. I'm not going to say it. it until, until later. Pussy ass bitch with a pussy ass dick. Yeah, maybe, maybe. <laughs> okay, so. I guess there's one thing in there, so... Sev, it's not looking good for you. Oh, dear. <laughs> uh, Savage, I'm going to give you the pleasure of, of the smack and the hammer on Sev this time. <laughs> I love the sound effects of this show. So, uh, moving on for Unit of the Week. Um, what we should do is like make up a snippet <laughs> of all... Like a soundboard of all the hammers, so now we can just hit the button. And we don't even have to do a show, we just mix it all together and... Yeah, we just there recycle you go. it. It's a montage show. <laughs> yeah. That'd be kind of... Yeah. My vocal track over Savages. <laughs> That'd be kind of cool, actually, to do a montage show. Anyway, you know the... Yeah, we get to the... Oh. Yes? No? I was go gonna on. Say, we, get, we get we're getting towards the limit where we need to do, like, a greatest hits thing now. Yeah. Yeah. Just rip off, rip off the fans with one episode. It's just like showing them stuff that's already been done. I actually, I wouldn't mind watching all the hammers again and actually doing kind of like a greatest hits kind of montage kind of show. It would uh, actually be pretty funny. I actually wouldn't mind doing that. Um, so maybe that's something. It'll, that's that's a lot of hours of watching, but <laughs> yeah, I might try it. Anyway, it's like dramatic music over the yeah. Sorry, Karen. Unit of the week. This is a pick of mine. Um, I picked the the Tower Riptide. Um, this is one that I kind of didn't rate it very high when it first came out. I kind of said that um, it it'll kill itself before the end of the game, and that it's only going to be able to do damage by um, overcharging and overcharging or whatever it does. Um, and I'm wrong uh, about that. It. I, honestly, it stays alive longer than it than I thought it was going to. Um, I had a terrible, it, like terrible time of not hurting myself um, in our last game against Seb. You know, I think I, I think he did zero wounds to it, and I did like two or three to it, and that's yeah. that's it hurting itself. Um, basically, we were playing a 500 point game, and it was just like kill points, and I kind of just hid my proofed my HQ down the back and just kind of shot anything that came to me and just sent my crisis suits, my Riptide up to deal with the rest of his army. And the Riptide tanked that army. Um, like it, it's, it's a beast and I would take one of these in my Tau army at like nearly every point. Because um, it's just, it's a, it's a better unit than I expected it was going to be. Um, and yeah, I'm just, I mean... Savage, you haven't come up against one of these yet, have you? Any words to say on the Riptide, though? Uh, I don't know. It looks cool. <laughs> to, to, me, <laughs> to me, it feels like a flying Vindicator. Because uh, it, it has, like, it ha can do, like, a really powerful strength something blast template kind of thing uh, with its with its ion accelerator, and it can move 
like a you know it's a it's a jump monstrous creature. We're not going to get into that. If you want to get into that argument, go watch Battle Bros. Um, but it's it kind of feels like a really fast moving Vindicator to me, and that's what I really love about it. A, a fast moving survivable Vindicator. How many um, points is it? Um, I think it's. I mean, I had it in a 500 point game. I think it's like 180 standard. I think something along those oh. lines. You got my codex. Yeah, it's more expensive than a Vindicator, but it's you know, and you and you get a Vindicator in town. Yeah. Well, you could if you had allies, I guess, but that's about it. Um, yeah. So it it is. It's an elite choice. That's the only thing I don't really like about it. Because if you take them, then you're not getting your uh, crisis suits. So, you know, you take two of them, you're only getting one unit of crisis suits. So, that's the part I don't really like. If it was a heavy support choice, would have liked it a bit more. Uh, so the Riptide is 180. It's free to give it twin link plasma rifles instead of smart missiles, and it's free to give it twin link fusion blasters instead of st smart missiles. Um, it can exchange its heavy burst cannon for an ion accelerator for five points, which I would highly recommend. It can take two shield drones, uh, no, two shielded missile drones for 25 points per model. So that's pretty expensive, but you know, you might want to do it. it. May take up to two items from the support systems. The only one I kind of like taking is the. What's it called? Um, basically, it's the one that gives you feel no pain. That's the one I like taking. Uh, Seb, words on the. Words on the Riptide. Now you want to mention how much it misses. Yeah, it's big, big and scary. I just, I just wanted people not to get really excited straight away because, like, it, it definitely pays off and it definitely survives, but it can take a while to actually get things done. And while doing that, as you said, it can injure itself quite a lot. But I think we've had, we've had a few games with them now, and it, it's taken a good two turns of shooting, or two to three turns of shooting for you to actually hit something. But when it does hit, it it it's killing and it's surviving. But yeah, yeah, just be aware of that. Its problem is, its low ballistic skill. That Tau had that ballistic skill three. Yeah. Um, like that's its problem. Uh, that it's got fifty percent chance to kind of hit. And when you use a blast template, you know, it's always a risk there. And that's kind of its problem if you get unlucky with shooting. But honestly, I think it's a cheap enough and big enough target to just be taken for, I don't like taking things just to be used as fire magnets, but I honestly think that you could take one just as a fire magnet, even if it didn't do damage, which is going to do something. It's just a matter of like, what's it gonna, what's it gonna do, kind of thing, so. And it really is big enough and scary enough and distracting enough to really be quite effective fire magnet. <laughs> yeah. You just start chopping that towards stuff. <laughs> yeah. I wish you could have a melee option though. When you're in a when you're in a suit that big, um, that strong, uh, how it doesn't matter if you can't fight. I can't fight, but you put me in that suit and I can kill stuff. <laughs> like, it, why not give it a big sword? Like, you don't have to know how to fight to swing around a big sword and hit things with it. I think that that would be the only thing I would like to add it to a riptide would be a melee option. Would we be complaining about it? Really low weapon skill, though, being a towel. Well, that's what I mean. Like, even it, it, it's, it doesn't really matter. It, I mean, when you're that strong, you know, you're looking at strength ten. Um, even if you, you got low weapon skill, you're probably only needing what fives to hit. You know, that's kind of terrible, but, you know, it, 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 it still would be kind of cool to see it. Um, and like, there's there's crisis suits out there that have decent weapon skills. So if some if someone knows how to fight, why not put them in a Riptide? Uh, it, that could be kind of a cool upgrade. Like maybe upgrade the pilot to someone that knows better fighting skill. So maybe it drops them ballistic skill, but they have a little bit more weapon skill. I know it's really just nitpicking. It's a good unit, but with something that big, it would be just cool to see it with a big sword or something like that. It's, yeah. With that option, it's surprised they haven't done it because with, 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 with everything else, they like to give <coughs> basically the melee or shooting version of everything. I think it's just because it's Tal. Yeah. Uh, Savage, you were about to say something? I was pretty much just saying what Seb said. It's like the Eldar one has the mm -hmm. shooting in close combat, but. Even yeah, a Dreadnought Tal's, does. It's, yeah. But yeah, I, th I think you're right, though. Is it's, it's Tal. Like, they're not meant to. Yeah. 
I mean, it's still really punch. strong in close combat. It's still a monstrous creature, so you are going at AP2. It's still, like, you know, high strength. I don't... I mean, i got the codex here. What's the strength on it? Uh, it's still... It's still going at... Riptide. Weapon skill 2, so that's unfortunate. But you... Uh, initiative 2, so that's, again, unfortunate. Toughness 6, though. You're in combat with Sonic with toughness 6. You know, that's kind of difficult to hit it. I uh, heard it, sorry. Um, it's also got strength 6. So you're being able to take down tanks, you can instant death things with toughness 3, you're at AP 2, so even space marines you're going to take down uh, with 2's to wound. So you can do it. Um, it's See, just I don't, a little bit more I don't difficult. think the weapon skill really matters too much because you're still only going to need 4's to hit. 4's or 5's? 4's, it, it never goes to 5, okay. I'm pretty sure. I thought, I thought it never went to 6. I think, it, I don't know. I got my robot too, I got the big chunky one, I can't find my small one. Yeah, yeah. it goes it goes to five. That does. If you're on two weapon skill and you're fighting something with five weapon skill. So when's uh. that gonna happen though? Like if you're taking on the right stuff, you know, you're not you're not really gonna have a problem. If you if you charge a unit of tactical marines, you know, fours and twos. Yeah, you know. Yeah, so I mean, like most of the time, it's, it's it's not really gonna matter. Yeah, most of the time it won't matter, unless you're coming up against like a HQ or. And even gonna... then, once you get those fives, you're really only gonna need twos next. Yeah. So it it can melee. It'd just be nice to have a melee option. Yeah, I think that would be kind of cool. So, any final words on the Riptide from anyone? Uh, pretty epic. Oh. <laughs> Well, well, why? Well, yeah. does Tau have like a melee unit though? Not really. Um, it's really. considered disrespectful, like uh, or un honorable. Which is kind of strange because it's the exact opposite of kind of anything ever. It's kind of the honorable yeah. thing to fight in melee. <laughs> um, they have like obviously far sight is melee. Um, the new far sight supplement you can get fusion blades or whatever on your on your uh, HQs. So, like, technically a crisis suit could go into melee, but they'd, you know, crew kinda, so they don't really have melee options. Yeah. Which is a shame, because honestly, crisis suits, a melee crisis suit option would have been awesome. Yeah. But, I, mean, that's, I guess that's a different topic, though. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. So, we're ready to move on? Yeah. Okay, so what is up next is hobby tip. I thought of one. If no one else has one this week, anyone okay. have one? No. Okay, so for a long time, I would buy Games Workshop spray paint because it was when I moved over here. I didn't really know much of the brands, and it was just the safe bet. You know, I I like Games Workshop spray paint. It works. You know, blah blah blah. It costs though, like you know, sixteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen dollars, something like that. Uh, Army Painter is about the same, but I can kind of see why Army Painter is, because it's a, it's a color primer. It primes and base coats. Um, and that's kind of why you know, I would give Army Painter the edge there. Uh, so, my point that I'm getting at is I have found a brand that I do like, and it's uh, this Krylon Color Master right there. Uh, flat, flat black, or yeah, flat black. Uh, and it's like three dollars a can, so you can buy, you know, four or five of these, and the price you can buy one can of Games Workshop spray paint. It's not as good in the sense that if you do hold the model in one spot for too long, it will, you know, come off at the corners. Um, but once you paint the model, you're not really. It's not really a problem. It's just a primer. That's what its job is. Um, it's not as nice as the Games Workshop one. Honestly, it, it goes on with a really nice. Um, it's not. It doesn't go on thick. It goes on really thin. In fact, sometimes I got to do a couple of layers, and I really like that as well. So you don't you don't lose a lot of detail, which sometimes can happen with Army Builder. But um, so yeah, so my hobby tip would be check out the Krylon if you're in I guess America. Maybe you can get it elsewhere. Um, I can't remember the brand in Australia that I used, but basically it was just a flat black. Um, I don't even know if it was a primer, it was just a black spray paint. Um, fiddly bits, is that what it's called? I'm pretty uh, sure it's fiddly bits. 
probably something like that. Yeah. Just whatever you do, don't get gloss. <laughs> yeah, we had a friend that got gloss. Gloss black. Yeah, the, that, was the, that was the worst. Because yeah. even he, the paint coat that he put over was still was glossy. Yeah. And, yeah. At that stage, yeah, it's time to strip your models. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, uh, Seb, what do you use for undercoating? Seb does I've paint. Using the... <laughs> I've painted some things. I've sprayed some more things. Um, I've been using the GW paint. And how much did it cost you? Uh, it's about the same. I think about 16, 18 pounds, something like that. So it's pretty expensive. I mean, how much yeah, is just a regular expensive. can of primer? I mean, I'm not sure if you... Uh, I'm not sure it's in my head, but I, I, I hadn't really thought that there were many other options. I thought other things would wouldn't work so well. So now I, I'm, I'm intrigued. Might yeah. have to look into that. I mean, it's, I've had trouble with other ones. I think, I'm not sure if it was a Krylon, but I tried one that was a grey primer and it was just really watery. Uh, I tried one that, um, an automotive primer that fills cracks. Um, if anything is going to fill a crack, like on like a car's paint or anything like that, probably don't want to spray it on a model if it fills stuff, because it's probably going to fill the detail. But yeah, the, that Krylon is, has been pretty good, so it's... Uh, you, you definitely have to be careful what you get though because there's like another friend had spray paint that melted his models <laughs> what type of Good spray paint was that? <laughs> what what? what spray paint was that? I can't remember that's it was, really um, interesting to have a spray paint melt models yeah it was on his Eldar do you know who I'm talking about? no eh? Karen? Oh, right, yeah. Yeah. I know who you're talking about, I didn't know. Yeah. I know now, but I didn't know, really know that story. Yeah, apparently he, like, spray painted his models and they, like, melted. I don't know what he was using. Probably yeah. the wrong stuff. Yeah, probably the wrong. Most any of the cheap spray paints will probably be w what you need. I mean, it's... Yeah. Um, you just don't get anything that... Just get a primer. Uh, this just says, uh, yeah, primer. <laughs> I, I would say, so if if you had the spare money, go with Army Painter. If or like if you can if you, if you, afford it, yeah, yeah. Or if there's like a cheaper alternative, because I, I'm not sure if there is or not. About like that has coloured like primers and stuff. Um, well, this brand, Krylon does. Yeah. They have colored, they have colored primers. If you, yeah, it's, if you want a black, pr like, primer, um, you can probably go for a cheap one, unless you want Army Builder, or, uh, yeah, Army Painter, or Games Workshop. But if you are on a budget, Krylon is a good brand, so. Yeah. But yeah, other, nice. otherwise use Army, Army Builder, Army Painter, not Army Builder. Yeah. Army Painter, because that's, that's a really good brand of paints. So and, and it's recommend. so easy. You just <laughs> spray and wash. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else on spray paints for hobby tip? Uh, don't get the Games Workshop spray gun. <laughs> yeah, don't really get the Games Workshop spray gun. It's probably better just to get a an air it's, like an airbrush at that point. Yeah, either an airbrush or if you just. For base coating, um, go, just go Army Builder because uh, it's, it's so much cheaper. So now Army you're doing Painter. it. Yeah, I'm doing it because you're doing it. Yeah, and I was doing it because <laughs> Seb was talking about Army Builder in the news. <laughs> anyway. So it's all Seb's fault. So, uh, I'm sorry. Before we start arguing again, let's uh, move on, shall we, <laughs> to I think this is the lab. Yep. So last week, you may remember that we were talking about supplements and how we didn't think that Black Legion needed a supplement. Seb said that. Well, I don't know. He didn't say that he they needed one, but he said that he, you know it wasn't a bad thing. And then we sort of came up with this challenge: like, let's make these Black Legion army lists and see the difference between these army lists and when the Black Legion supplement actually arrives. So uh, that is going to be the lab for this week. Who wants to go first? Shorty. Okay, Savage it is with his Black Did Legion army list. I made two thousand points. I. No, we, we agreed somewhere between 50, oh, 15 and 2,000, yeah. Yeah, so 
yeah, I went the extra bit just to add some extra stuff. So over two thousand points, though. I I don't know if you have to or if it's optional that you take a second primary detachment. I can't remember my brain. I think brain it's optional, stuff. but yeah. Yeah, well, I, I, get, I took two HQs just in case anyway. But yeah, so I got uh, I got Ezekiel, my man, main man, uh, with um, Abaddon, Chosen. Right? Yeah. For anyone yeah. that's confused. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm calling it me, me and him are on a first name basis. <laughs> Um, him with five chosen, um, four of them have lightning claw, and the champion has a power axe. They're all in a land raid together. Is this power armor or terminator? Power. Okay. They're chosen. Yeah, you can't get chosen terminators anymore. Okay. Yeah. So they're in a land raider. Um, yeah, I I was going to have more chosen, but I maxed out. The close combat weapons at four for some reason. Right. I don't know if the army build was just being weird or not, so I just dropped it back down to um, the four and the champion in, in the land raider. Anyway, and then two squads of uh, chaos based marines with plasma guns in rhinos, uh, two defilers, a hell drake, a demon prince with power armor and wings, and he has the mark of zinch and a hell brute. Well, he's Demon of Zinch, so... That's it. Any thoughts on where the fluffiness of a Black Legion army was kind of present? Um, in the Chaos Marines. <laughs> um, well, obviously Abaddon and gave him some chosen because he makes them troop. Um, not so much really the with the Plasma and whatnot in there. Okay. You know, they're going to use plasma, but it's not like they're, that's their thing. The defilers, because I, I can't remember where I read this, but I'm pretty sure I read it somewhere, is that Abaddon actually commissioned the making of, defi of the defilers. So, like, they were, like, his kind of design thing. Right. After, after the heresy and stuff. And then... The Hell Drake and the Hell Brute because Black Legion seem to like demon engines. Okay. Um, and not go on if you have more. I was just gonna say the Demon Prince as well, just because if you have a ban, you'd think he'd bring some heavy backup like a Demon Prince or something. Right. I I only gave him Zinch just to get some psychic powers because you know, he had they have to be a uh, a demon or something. So yeah. Okay, so, um, Seb, you have anything to say on that list? On its fluffiness of the Black Legion? Uh, well, you can, you can definitely see with the Dividers and, and the Chosen there, he's going for, for Abaddon and his boys, but, um, I definitely think that the once we see the supplement, I think we'll be able to see some very different things to that, to, for, to all our lists, essentially, right. but... But, but yeah. Well, I think I'll go next because we, me and Savage are on one team, kind of, and you're on an, another team. Um, <laughs> you're for, and we're against. So I'll, I'll, I'll go for, I'll go next. Um, so let me bring up my list here. Uh, so I've got uh, Abaddon, obviously. First off, the way I kind of looked at this list is that, like, I, I understand, like, the Black Legion to me is a lot of Space Marines. You know, it's kind of like the biggest legion, biggest warband, or whatever you want to call it. Uh, they, you know, everyone kind of flocks to them, I guess. Um, so I know that, like, other legions, like, you got berserkers and things like that, do end up there, but I haven't taken any of them, because I just kind of wanted to get a base black legion kind of list going. I kind of went, I didn't really know what tactics they used, so I kind of went with the idea that they still kind of use tactics like um, Sons of Horus, like the whole, like, spare tip approach you know they, they they come in with like a spare tip and take out the head of the uh, of the other person's army is that is that correct that's what the sons mm -hmm. of Horus did right yeah yeah um so that's kind of the idea that i was going with so i have um abaddon and i have him with seven uh terminators one's obviously a terminator champion and 
ones or uh, and six of them are regular Chaos Terminators. And because they're like this, these guys like this, the tip of the spear, um, they're going to deep strike in. I gave them two plas combi plasmas, two combi flamers, and two combi melters, so they can take on anything, anything they want to. They can take it on when they deep strike in. Uh, they also have four power swords and two power axes in that unit. No, sorry, three power axes, uh, four power swords. Um, I then have two squads, uh, three squads of ten um, Chaos Space Marines and Rhinos, each with two plasma guns, and they make up you know, the rest of the spear. So you kind of got the Terminators that go in as the spear tip, and then those guys are the rest of the spear. And with them, I also have two Hell Drakes with Bale Flamers. So my whole idea for that Black Legion list is kind of like that tactic of the spear tip. So you have like your Terminators go in, then you've got your Heldrakes and your Rhinos. So that's that's kind of mine, and that's 1,500 points. Well, it's 1,497, so i got three points left over. So, uh, Seb, what about that? Yeah, I, I, I like it. I like the idea that the, the, the spear tip and going the whole... We've, we've, we've gone a similar route, although our, our lists are rather different. So I'm, I'm liking that. I just... I, I, I I wasn't sure about the like I know the Black Legion do like all their new demon engines, but I just wasn't sure where they stood on the uh, the sort of prevalence of Heldrex and stuff. So yeah. I think that's one of the reasons I haven't included them in mine. But bigger, the, the, if it was going bigger, I definitely probably would have. The reason why I put in Heldrex is because obviously when I'm making a list, I still want to make even if it's a fluffy list, I still want to make it somewhat competitive. Um, and I thought I don't really see any other Legion using a Heldrake. Um, I don't, maybe word bearers or something like that, but honestly, I don't really think the Heldrake, when I picture it, it's really Black Legion because it doesn't really go anywhere else in my mind. Like, I can't really picture it in, like, a World Leaders army or I can't really picture it in, like, a, you know, th uh, Thousand Suns or, a, you know, something like that. So Black Legion is really the only army I can picture it in. Um, I mean, I don't know, like... Uh, Savage, what about you? Like, what, where do you picture like a Heldrake being in like which army? Yeah, I, I can imagine being Black Legion, maybe also like a Nurgle, mm -hmm. Nurgle kind of version of it. It'd be like different though. What about Black Wordbearers? Because they like their whole demons as well, the undivided demons. Yeah, I, I still don't know though. I don't. I think Wordbearers would go more like full on demon. Mm, I just like it in like the word bearers engine. for the fire, like you know the whole like uh, word bearers yeah. kind of unholy fire. I guess that's 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 kind of what I. Yeah. Anyway, we're getting away from Black Legion, but that's just my <laughs> anyway. Yeah. I I think I think the look of the Helldrake, like the model itself, just has that Black Legion mm -hmm. feel to it. Yeah, it I, looks good in black and gold. Yeah, I know. I definitely yeah. I, I I agree with that. Where it's like if you bring it in any other army, you kind of have to do a kind of conversion for it. Like it might like it might be a nogly thing, yeah. But you you kind of don't want it to be a dragon. You want it to be like, this big like bloat kind of fly, kind of you know going around the battlefield like spewing kind of you know vomit on people. Like that's what I imagine it would be for a noble one. Um, yeah. It's it's um it is a weird unit, but what Savage? What do you think about the list in general? Is like a Black Legion kind of list. Yeah, I reckon it's good. Like, especially with like the um, Loon Wolves tactics, mm -hmm. I'd see it more going that way as well. Like with like the Terminators and Abaddon, and like when you have Abaddon, I always picture it as him and like his like personalized like yep. bodyguard kind of. Yeah, unit with him that has been with him for like since before the heresy kind of thing. Yeah, like that's the way I always see that. Kind of I thing. was I was gonna go chosen, uh, because of his rule making him troop, but then yeah. I thought terminators because he uh, um he was the like the he he had terminators with him in like before the heresy is that correct? I'm pretty yeah yeah something he was like always that. in terminator. Yeah, he was the, he's the leader of first company, so he's the leader of the terminators. Yeah, that's that's. That that's was kind of my thinking, but then I also wanted I was also going to replace the the regular troops for for chosen, but then I'm thinking, am I making a Black Legion army or am I making a a Baden army? So yeah, it's 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 difficult. So uh, Seb, last but not least, 
give us your uh... okay well I was, I was at a 1500 but in my head I've kind of added <laughs> to make it to 2000 because there's things that I wanted so um, I went with uh, Abaddon so with uh, four terminators in a land raider um, a pair of lining claws uh, and a pair of paraphys um, all veterans of the long war um, no one's mentioned that I think that's really Ooh, important that's actually uh, what I did put on my terminators I didn't put it on my other guys but I put it on my terminators I forgot okay, about that, cool. yeah. Because yeah. just for, for me, the, these guys again, going with the uh, the the Sons of Horus uh, kind of idea. In, in my head, these guys were all, all lunar wolves. Yeah. The, 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 these are these are his his own personal vanguard spear tip. Like, mm -hmm. so you yeah, so you got four yeah four terminators with lightning claws, Parfis with Abaddon in a land raider, and then another <laughs> five um, in another with the same setup in another land raider. Um, and then I've got ten troops, uh, so ten care space marines with close combat weapons, uh, the aspiring champion with melt bombs in a rhino with extra armor and a havoc launcher. Uh, I've also got uh, I did have ten, but I've just made it now fifteen um, troops again, all with all of these with veterans long war, last cannon and plasma gun, and with the extra points I've just added with another two defilers just because I wanted them, but I couldn't afford them mm -hmm. at fifteen hundred. But at apocalypse level, I would want. Berserkers, Plague Marines, Thousand Sons, I'd, Night Lords, I'd want every, a little bit of everything to show how ragtag and mottled the actual Black Legion are. Yeah, no, I agree there. If I had more points, I was I would add maybe like a squad of Nurgle, you know, Marines, some, you know, Berserkers and stuff like that. Obviously painted black with like maybe just like a red shoulder pad or a green shoulder pad. Yeah. And then... And the way that I Sorry. kind of went with my veterans of the long war is I just put them on the Terminator because I did kind of have the idea that they have been there since you know Lunar Wolves kind of thing but then yeah. I didn't for the other guys because I kind of the way I see Black Legion is that they're just kind of the go-to for you know young well not young but you know like not the you know like the new kind of Chaos Space Marines like like I just kind of see Black Legion as like the big, a big recruiter for Chaos Space Marines so originally I had actually just big 20 man squads of of Chaos Space Marines like you know just the young bloods kind of thing and then I put them on rhinos cuz I went for the whole spare tip idea but that's why I didn't give them veterans of the long war cuz I just kind of figured them being like you know there might be a couple of veterans in there but there also might be a couple of newbies so. Yeah well uh, like I said I went for everything just cuz they, they this were his his own quarter if right. you know I mean also the four terminators with him if I could have done it I would have given I would have made them his chosen Terminators because he does actually have his four. That they're not in the Codex, but they're the, the, his four actual chosen Terminator champions. Right. With each mark, so I, you can't have more than one mark in a squad. But I would have had all four marks in the squad if I could have. <laughs> right. That makes sense. Yep. So um, let's address address the question that we really kind of did this for after. After making a list, trying to go Black Legion, does it seem necessary to have a Black Legion supplement? Um, who wants to go first on this one? Because I, cause I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> after well, doing I'll, it, I'll have it go last. I have YouTube because we're, we're we're two different teams. So, so you you don't. So you have your say. Then Tavi can come in. Then I won't speak over him. <laughs> okay, so I'll go first. Personally. It's it's difficult because I, f I did find it a little bit hard to make a Black Legion one. That's mostly because I just don't know much about, about the Black Legion. I didn't really do any research. I just kind of did what I already kind of know about him. Um, obviously, you guys knew about the whole Defiler thing. I did not, so maybe I would have replaced a Haldrake for a Defiler. Um, it's, I really think it depends on where you're going with it. I think if your version of the Black Legion is just this big ragtag mob of guys from other legions, from other war bands, I think if you're looking at at them for that, I think they don't need one. I think their codex does a good enough job at letting you take everything you need. You can take squads of berserkers, plague marines, noise marines, thousand suns, you know, you can make your own kind of, you know, ragtag bunch I think if that's the way you're going for it I really don't think it needs one however I think if you're going for it in the more sense of you're not going to take those specialist you know cult marines kind of thing 
if you're not going to go for Plague Marines and all that, then I think they do need one. If you're just trying to make it this kind of like, well, whatever happened to the Sons of Horus kind of thing, I think that's when they'll need their supplement. But if it's just a ragtag bunch of everything, you know, you can make a ragtag bunch of everything with the Codex. Yeah, you know, that's 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 where I stand. Uh, Savage thoughts. Uh, I, honestly, I, I think all they really need is maybe like one or two like named characters for Black Legion because I don't really see a Baden as being as much Black Legion as he is just like everything. His, yeah, his own like, kind he, of thing. He's, he is just chaos, like mm. because he never the only things he ever does or that I know of anyway is like he's like the head of like the great not the great crusade like black the crusade. black crusade <clears throat> so like he's heading that whereas he's not gonna head the black legion just by itself as much as he's leading everyone together so if they just you know like a white dwarf of like one or two named HQs that mm -hmm. are Black Legion that just like Power Armor HQs or something, a Power Armor and a Terminator maybe. Right. Just to add that because one, a balance like heaps of points, like 265 and to to take him in everything is kind of Mm -hmm. I don't know what the but word you don't, is. But you don't think you <laughs> can just make your own kind of Black Legion HQ with just the rules that they already provide? You could, but if they were going for yeah, if they were going for a, like, so you're kind a of a supplement kind of thing. Yeah. So instead of saying they need a supplement, you're like they don't need a supplement; they just need a supplement, supplement in the White Dwarf kind of thing. They just need a few bits yeah. and pieces. Yeah, like in, if they're going that route, then instead of going a full blown supplement, just a couple of, like two named HQs maybe. But the, the supplements don't actually add too much. They don't really add too many new units. It's more like just rule changes. So, like, if it if it was just a book with a lot of fluff on Black Legion, two new HQs, maybe some some special Black Legion war gear, maybe a, a special Black Legion rule or two, and that was the supplement, would you agree with that? Or you just don't want them getting Maybe. their own book? <laughs> well, like, if they're just going to do that, like, and charge $80 or whatever it is, that's that's where it gets ridiculous for me, is okay. it, it's a supplement, and they're not adding that much, but then they're charging a full price codex for it. That's basically what they do. Uh, the Farsight one has, I don't think it has any new units apart from the Farsight kind of bodyguard unit. It has some new war gear, it has some new rules, and a whole bunch of fluff. That's really all they do. They don't really add a whole bunch. Um, so, it, But forgetting about the price, would you be yes supplement? Maybe. I'd, I'd lean slightly towards it closer, but I still don't think that they need one as yeah. much as other legions. No, definitely. I'm at, I'm at that stage. I think I think yeah, they could get they could have a supplement. I think there's room for a black legion supplement, but at the same time, I think they shouldn't because I think something else requires it more in their place. That that's where I'm yeah. at. They they should get a supplement. No, there's there's enough there that they should that they could get a supplement, but there's other war bands, there's other legions there that need a supplement more than than the Black Legion, so that's yeah, that's, that's what I'm that's at. kind of, that's what I kind of my argument is like they could they could use a supplement. It's just do they need it more mm -hmm. than other ones? Okay, so that's yeah. that's our team. We're swaying more towards you, Sev. But that's like how you both have come around quite a lot. Let's let's see what you have to say. Compromise. So I I definitely felt last week that 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 they they did. And I feel, if, if anything, I feel much stronger from doing the, um, from actually doing this exercise, because they are, it's, it like, yeah, I've got like all of our lists, all of our lists are just, I, I'd like, and I don't mean no offense to anyone, I think all of our lists are just Space Marine lists, Chaos Space Marine lists, like they're, like you, because anyone can take Defiders, anyone can take 
Terminators, anyone could take Land Raiders and do it that way. And I, I really think you've got the, the four chosen uh, or some kind of Avedon command squad with mixed marks and named characters is completely necessary. Some kind of special um, Lunar Wolf slash Sons of Horus slash Veterans of Long War individual rule for Black Legion would be more appropriate. Mm -hmm. Maybe um, even some like redesigns or, or re personal add-ons to a defiler or other demon engines because they use so much demon engines i just think it's more and more and again we can talk about the money and we can talk about other other things deserving it but that that's not really what we're talking about we're talking about whether or not the, this whole exercise is whether or not the black legion should have a supplement and i think we can all come together and say yes fuck no this. no <laughs> no it's, it's no it's not they should have like a supplement they... we we agreed that they there's enough room that they that 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 there could be a supplement made for them. We agree that there's room to have a supplement, <laughs> but should they be the ones having the supplement? I don't think so. Yeah, the, that was the can you, point, though. Can you yeah. at least agree there? Yeah. That there's the, oh, the, I can totally yeah. agree that, they, that they, the other, others should have it first. Like, an Empress yeah. Children would make more, far more sense to back Legion first, but I'm now... I've whipped myself into a bit of a frothing excitement for the Black Legion. Supplement okay. Now. But you, you're just saying that, like, any army can take... Um, defilers, like Chaos Army, take defilers and stuff like that. You go to the, the Space Marines Codex, which is pretty much Ultramarines, and they can get all land speeders and stuff, which any other Space Marine army can take as well. So, should Ultramarines get a supplement? I, I think the Ultramarines are exactly where Black Legion are at. Um, That's what I mean. They're, they're the same thing, just different yep. sides of the fence. But I, but I think, like, Ultramarines would be in the same would be kind of the same way less than black legion because ultramarines are just like they are just space marines like they are to a t that codex but i think you could add a little bit of something in there um but i think it's kind of the same thing like you could do an ultramarine supplement but are they the ones that need it no like they need it even less than the black legion but i think we can all agree black legion there's enough to make a supplement there but should they be the ones getting it first no they should be the the last ones getting it. They should do no. This the way they should do it is they leave the five ones that already have their special units in the codex mm -hmm. out for now. Put them in the last spots and then put like night lords, iron warriors, right. and the other ones all yeah. together. Well, I don't think I don't think Empress children, uh, world eaters, uh, what are the other one, death guard, and. Thousand Suns. Thousand Suns. I don't think they really need supplements at all. Um, no. Maybe, maybe if they did, just make it one book. Because like they kind of they have their units. Um, I think the ones that needed are Iron Warriors, have Night Lords. A unit. What? They have they have, they a, have unit. a unit. They have an HQ. And then you can take yeah. marks on anything else. The only thing they need is maybe like a rule to make the regular troop more uh you know world eaty or more you know what i mean like they don't need they don't need any more units terminators and all that stuff and their own put like you could have a, a particularly thousand sunny scabbery demon engine or something to go yeah with it. but i mean they don't like need their own i don't think they need more units i just think they need more rules to kind of change the units that is already available Oh yeah, sorry. I don't. I yeah. I, yeah, I took that slightly differently. Yeah. So if you if you really like look at it, the what the armies are all best known for, like world leaders, is, is like close combat, and you can chuck berserkers at people, and they'll eat people. Like Death Guard will sit there and just take abuse. They've already got their kind of like what their army is well known for in this codex, the Chaos Codex. Whereas, like, Night Lords, their fear tactics, like, mm -hmm. maybe a special rule for fear. Iron Warriors with their siege tactics. No, like, definitely. show more of the special rules of the other armies yeah. that they're not showing. The only thing I think about things like the World Eaters and the, you know, Thousand Suns and all that, it's like what Seb said, is that there's... Yeah, you can get the Berserkers, but what have, like, what have, what about their Terminators? You know, like... That I think I th I can agree with that. Like there should be some sort of upgrade to upgrade the Terminators into like Berserker Terminators. You know, yeah. like, Berserker basi so it's basically Berserkers <laughs> with Terminator armor. Like why is that rule not there? Um, you know, a thousand suns in Terminator armor. I think that 
is what is lacking because when you do and you see it and I mean I'm pretty sure Savage you'll, you'll agree with me when you make your world eaters armies your berserk is a, a well like a world eater fluffy goodness like you you can tell they're world eaters just by the rules but then you have a squad of terminators and yeah they got the mark of corn but there's just a l something missing there's like a little bit missing there it's like yeah they got the mark of corn but they're not really world eaters you know yeah but I don't think they need a whole supplement I think those four could really be put into one yeah, just well, kind of that's, a, done like that, that's yeah. the thing that missing they're missing that little bit extra, whereas the other ones that are, are missing completely a lot. left out altogether. Mm. Like, yeah, there's nothing for them. There's nothing no. There's nothing for them apart from yeah, you can take raptors. Well yeah, yeah. I can take raptors, but that's not what I'm about. I'm about causing fear. Give my whole unit army wide fear. You know. Yeah. Um make them troop. Everything. You know, give me a named HQ. Like that's where you could really make a good supplement. But I think we're yeah. all really in agreement right now, and I think that exercise actually kind of helped. Uh, so, which which is kind of crazy. Um, and we are at the hour and thirty five minute mark, so it is Ooh. it is <laughs> it's uh, time for us to say goodbye. Um, Quick show. <laughs> tell me, tell me bye bye. Tell me, tell me bye bye. It was a long show, but it was it was a good show. We had we had a lot it of a lot of good uh, stuff. Passion. In there. Yeah, and a lot of good information, so I'm definitely happy. So, uh, before I do my closing stuff, um, Seb, what do you got going on? I've uh, just been, as I said, recording the Pistols of Logar every day by Erebus Talentosa. Check them out on the Darcevius uh, YouTube and uh, on, on the blog for a bit of fun, uh, a bit of Logar rapping today, good times. So, yeah, that's kind of what's going on with me. And Lawkeeper's Necrons this week. Will you be joining us on Thursday? Um. Probably not. Uh, okay. What Thursday? Yeah, no, because I'll be at work on Thursday. So, because I think by the time you do it, it's by the time I'm I'm leaving for work. So yeah. Um. Savage, what do you got going on? Work. Work. <laughs> yeah. Uh. We're not. We're not doing Battle Bros this week. It's. No, we're we gotta find. It. It, we gotta find a better date for that. At the moment. Yeah. We. It's not not suited for the day that's on, so we've got to work out some time. Yeah. And I just thought of a knowledge challenge for us for next week, if you wanted. Yeah. Is to take take either Blood Angels or Space Wolves Codex, and then turn that into a Plain Jane Codex. Like use the units from that, but you try and I mean? make it as plain as you can. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. So reverse the roles space, a bit. space Marines, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Pretty much. So, like, revert, reverse the roles of it. It's pretty easy to do that for Blood Angels, though. Because you just yeah. take Tactical Marines and Devastators. Yeah. That's what I mean. This is. We'll yeah, work on it. Maybe. <laughs> we'll, we'll see, <laughs> we'll see what happens. Wolves. You can do it with Space Wolves, yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, again, Dice Troop is a non-profit group we do not make these videos for profit however if you do like them uh, we do have a donate button on the Dice True blog and uh, donates just go to keeping uh, basically our subscriptions for XSplit and Livestream Pro and all that down uh, we do all these videos on our own time for free we do them for fun we hope you enjoy them um, I noticed we just got a viewer right in our outro, so I'm sorry that you missed it, but we will be posting this up very shortly, I guess. Um, I have basically nothing going on this week apart from coming back and doing the hammer next week because, you know, Battle Bros is not on. Maybe we'll do another um, Time to Duel episode. Uh, that got more response than I realized. So if Savage is interested in doing another one of them, maybe we'll do another one of those. Oh yeah. So uh, yeah. So thank you for watching, everyone. We uh, thank you very much for watching it right through to the hour and forty minute mark. So <laughs> <laughs> we won't take any more of your time. Uh, thanks for watching. Catch you later. Tada bye. Peace. <laughs>the news ends and you see like the reporters like still talking but you can't hear them except you can still hear us talking <laughs> I always have to say something